Yes, I am living the dream. I believe that. Off-grid life. Simple, practical, naturistic, and enjoyable. I'm sure most have experienced it at least at some level. Whether it was a weekend getaway next to a riverbank where a rippling brook could be heard, or atop some mountain where the scenery literally took your breath away. For us here in the Canadian North, we have chosen to live full time in our newly built log cabin. Not only is it newly built, but built by my own two hands, literally from the ground up. Given the fact that I'm not a carpenter, engineer, architect, plumber, or electrician, to say this was the largest challenge ever in my life is an understatement. I simply went for it. It's taken over one year to complete it fully, and I'm feeling a little proud today simply because it took thousands of hours of thinking and working to get right here where I am today. A lot of you have been asking me for this video and today is the day when I get to show you its beauty and also how it works from start to finish. Oh, it's a chilly one this morning. Welcome to my cabin, completely off grid and completely done. I can finally say, after all these months and pretty much a year, I can say that I've pretty much nailed every nail and screwed every screw and put every piece of board in place. And I guess it's 98% because it's never 100% done, is it? But she's looking pretty good and it's comfortable. And the happiest thing I can say about it is that it all works. So we'll take a little run through now and see exactly how it all shaped up. So I'll start with the living space because this is the place that we frequent the most. And when people drop by, uh, this is where we spend our time. And of course, this magnificent view, which faced to the north, by the way. And if you're thinking about getting a location for a cabin, try and get your main window facing north because if there's any uh, northern lights in the sky and the sun comes up over here in the summertime, over here in the wintertime, you get to see that first thing in the morning and last thing at night. So it's minus three degrees Celsius outside. It's 21.3 degrees Celsius, just comfortable inside. So we get all of our walls decorated, just nice. Some family photos. Several things were made for us, like this uh, end table by my Uncle Roger. This is my stove, my Blaze King Ashford 2.0, which I've done videos on. You guys can attest to that if you follow my channel. And it works absolutely spectacular in keeping this 1,000 square foot home completely warm and comfortable. It's all regulated by a thermostat back here. It never overruns and it keeps everything basically to the degree that you want to keep it at. In addition to the wood stove, I also have a propane backup heater right here that works really, really well. And it's 30,000 BTUs. Comes on very simple. I don't use this one very much, maybe for a little touch of heat first thing in the morning or something. And I have a carbon monoxide detector and a smoke detector. I got a vaulted ceiling in here, which plays a part in the aesthetics. It kind of looks nice, makes it look roomier. And also I installed two lights up there and fitted them with fans for cooling in the summertime and also to push down any heat that resides up in the top peak there down to where the living space is. And I control them with remotes on the wall right here. We also have a television here in the living room, which works perfect draws about 98 watts. And if you're looking for a television off-grid, look for an LED TV. That way it burns much less power. That's an old muzzle loader passed down for many generations in my family. Just an ornament these days. French doors face to the east. You see the lake there, outdoor kitchen out our driveway this way. Moving on from the living room, we'll just focus back on the kitchen. 
everything works fantastically well. Propane fridge, everything is electric here, even the microwave, propane stove. Covers were made and provided by Sunset Kitchen Bonavista, my good friend Johnny Gillum, who's an incredible, incredible carpenter. Sent me those cupboards and I installed them in like a day. Very simple and very beautiful. I'll get into my water system as we go along here, but I have fully functioning water here, hot, cold. And I chose to have some modern conveniences like this simple coffee maker, microwave, mixer, anything electric I can run out here, no problem. And actually I have a goose and a duck in the oven right now, which I'll show you guys in a few moments. In addition to our propane fridge, we have a DC operated freezer. And this is a freezer is dual compartments. You can either have that one freezing or like a refrigerator and the same thing with this one. Pick your choice. It's all controlled by the app and a little control panel down here. Lots of space. There's actually a ton of food can fit in here. Certainly more than a couple people can eat. Also situated in the kitchen, right here hidden behind this door is actually a laundry room. It's a stackable washer and dryer, just a regular washing machine. And the dryer is propane. Let's move right on into the washroom here. Everything works just the same as it would on a regular house in town. Nice and spacey. Everything works here, running water. You can flush the toilet, it's a normal toilet like you'd have home in your house. Shower is exactly the same as you would have in town as well. Run the tap, turn on the shower. Tons of pressure, tons of hot water. Just enough storage space for towels and all the things you would normally use on a day to day basis. Okay, let's move along to the master bedroom. This bedroom is nice and spacious as well. And it has a big window. That's one of the things I wanted. This window is like uh, six feet wide. And it has a wonderful view. In the summertime, you can uh, watch the sunrise. In the fall and the winter, you can watch the northern lights right out here. We have a little computer station here. TV, bedroom set. Just works perfectly. Same thing, fan for cool in the summertime or draw some heat down in the wintertime. Very comfortable. Very cozy. Come right out of this bedroom. I'm out. And come into the second bedroom. This is our guest bedroom. And there's also a very important utility room. You can't see it or you can't tell. This looks like a couple of clothes closets or whatever. But uh, this room is where a lot of the cabin is run from. Looks like another couple of closets there, but every closet here has a function rechargeable vacuum cleaner there so this is actually just what it looks like it, this is a closed closet and this closet here has a ton of stuff going on behind the scenes i guess you'd say this is where my electrical panel is and all of my power and i have three different power systems in here and one outside i have some lead acid batteries i have a gas generator outside I have my Blue Eddy, my main one, my Blue Eddy AC500, which is 5,000 watts. I also have a Blue Eddy 2,000 watt. So I have my lead acid batteries, like RV batteries here. I have a total of eight of these. Now, if I want to switch between these four, I apply this master switch right here. So I'll do it right now. I'll switch from my Blue Eddy AC500 down to my Blue Eddy AC200P here. And you saw no interruption whatsoever in the lights there. That's as simple as it gets. Now I'm kind of going to park right here for a little bit because the bulk of the questions I get is regarding the electrical system first for my cabin, how I make it all run and run smoothly. And secondly, I have uh, a lot of questions regarding water. I use what's called a Blue Eddy power system. And regardless of any sponsorship, I tell you honestly the way that things work. And I had no idea how this type of system worked until I actually got one when I got this off-grid cabin. And I used the older system using lead acid batteries. And it just does not compare to how this Blue Eddy, I have an AC500 and I, call, I have a couple of B300S batteries, lithium battery system that goes with it. And the beautiful thing about this system right here 
is that if you try to build your own system, unless you really know what you're doing, you have to try to mix and match everything. You have to get the solar panels, the right voltage from the solar panels, that has to go into a charge controller. You then have to have your battery system and hook your battery system up a certain way. Then you have to have an inverter to make the power go to your cabin. And it can all get a little shaky sometimes. And of course, then if something is not matching the other thing, you have to have it matched in parallel. You can't have it heavily weighted on one side, we'll say. But what I like about the Blue Eddy is two main features. Number one, it's plug and play. Everything is done for you. You hook your solar panel up to it. It has the charge controller. It has the battery system. And it has not only an inverter, but it has a pure sign inverter, which is actually the purest power you can have delivered. And that's extremely evident in this cabin. If you check out one of my previous videos, you'll see where I compared a gas generator and lead acid batteries and our Blue Eddy system here all in one video. And nothing could touch what the Blue Eddy did for us. This particular unit that I have, the AC500, delivers 5,000 watts of power. Now, how much power is that? You can run your lights, your pumps, your coffee makers, and your microwave all at once if you like to. But this system delivers power and it delivers it flawlessly, seamlessly, and perfectly. And I don't know how to say it any better than that because I am so impressed with it. It really has changed the way I feel about electricity and being off grid. Because before I had this, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was a struggle. There was always something that was, lights were blinking, something was cutting out. And again, if you're really good at this kind of stuff, if you're an expert, you can tear this video to pieces because you know exactly how to match the ball in systems. But for the average person like me, then this is the answer. It simply works. That's it. I knew I'd be talking a lot about this Blue Eddy system today and how it powers my cabin. So I did reach out to them and I asked if there was something that we could give away to you guys. So there is a contest. Stay tuned to the last bit of this video and it'll tell you exactly how you can win something extremely incredible from Blue Eddy. And I was going to keep it a secret, but actually Blue Eddy has agreed to give one of you lucky winners this complete unit right here free of charge no shipping cost ship right to your house again watch the end of the video to see how you can win so there's a lot going on in that closet there and it works perfectly let's switch over to this closet now this is where my water system is now i designed this water system myself it's very simple and it's based mainly around not freezing up in this cold northern climate our temperatures go down to minus 30, minus 40 degrees, base temperature, and we have six months of winter at least. So a huge challenge is to keep this from freezing up. So I dug myself a shallow well. The shallow well is about 10 feet deep and holds about 155 gallons of water. I have a one horsepower submersible electric pump. In fact, I have two, one in use and one for spare. Inside my cabin, I have this uh, BPA free 50 gallon water tank. The water comes from the well in this big three quarter inch poly pipe. Simply just puts the water right into the top. Inside of this tank, I've installed an automatic floating switch. And that switch automatically turns that pump down in the well on and off. When the water gets into about this level right here, it turns on the pump in the well. That pumps the water up into the tank until it fills up to about right there. So that's your buffer. You never got to touch it, it handles itself. So basically we always have a supply of water in this tank. The second it fills it to the top right here, the switch turns off the pump back down in the well and the water that's in this pipe runs right back into the well. And that's one of the main perks of this system because if you have no water lying in your pipe underground where it's freezing cold, then it will not freeze. Once the water is in the tank from the well, then it's fed to a simple 12 volt pump. It works just like your RV camper or whatever. This particular pump is a three gallon per minute pump. So when you're trying to tap or the washing machine, this RV pump pumps the water 
up into a pressure tank, which you don't have to have, by the way. I put it in there, this is a three gallon tank. It just keeps the pump from cutting in every 10 seconds. This way you've got enough water, you can fill up your sink for your dishes, brush your teeth, wash your hands, just simple tasks like that. There's enough water and pressure in there. It doesn't have to have a demand from the pump all the time, causing it to pulsate. Once it leaves the pressure tank, it goes into my hot water on demand system. This particular brand is called Equitemp. Takes you a while before you figure out the system. One controls the amount of water that's going through this unit. The other controls how much heat is applied to the water that's circulating through the unit. And there is a balance you have to figure out. Once you figure it out, you'll see I put little marks there and I pretty much leave them there because I know that's where the water heats up perfectly and has the right amount of flow. Now, what do you do when you go away in the winter time and it's below freezing temperatures? It's the same thing as an RV. You put your plumbing antifreeze right in here. You just turn on your taps and your washing machine, fill up the lines full of plumbing antifreeze, it takes 10 minutes. When you come back from your trip, you simply flush out your lines and apply new water and you're good to go again. Just for interest sake, I keep a meat probe thermometer and I have the actual meat probe down through the floor of my cabin. And that lets me know what the temperature is underneath my cabin in my crawl space. Cause I do have water pipes there, a couple of traps there from my shower and whatnot. And generally speaking, where I have my cabin skirting insulated, it stays three or four degrees above zero, which is just perfect to keep things from freezing down there. All right, let's take a peek outside at the solar panels and the wind generator. What a day on the wire, what a day. Oh. Move it away, big butt. Now it's frosty up here this morning, so I gotta be extra, extra careful. Okay, that's four 100 watt panels. Another four 100 watt panels. Another four 100 watt panels. And right here I have two sets of folding Bluetti solar panels. And I designed this so that I could take these panels off and take with me if I go RV camping. I can just simply charge up the batteries in my Blue Eddy that I use with my RV camping unit. And that's 700 watts of solar power right there. I have a 400 watt uh, wind generator there that I simply bought from Canadian Tires like five or 600 bucks. But I use that for my lead acid batteries just to try and keep them topped up. We have a Starlink system, which I highly recommend at this point. We have zero cell service in this area, so we need something. And the Starlink affords us to be able to make phone calls, use your internet, stream television, whatever you want to do. And it works really, really well. Oh, also for uploading YouTube videos. Did I ever tell you guys that I am frightened to death of heights? Before I get right off the power theme altogether here, I have a generator that I use for backup. In case you get days and days of no sun and no wind, then you have to recharge, in my case, the Blue Eddy system. And I have a Honda 3200 watt inverter. And this generator is light, very, very uh, fuel efficient, has an eco mode on it, and it can deliver up to 3200 watts. 2600 watts is comfortable. The Blue Eddy, when I'm charging it, it takes about 1850 watts. So there's tons of power to spare. And again, doesn't burn a whole lot of fuel. Now from time to time, I get amazed at what you guys take interest in. And you guys have a lot of interest in this generator hut that I built. And it took me a few prototypes before I actually got one that worked okay. And I might do a complete video on how this works because this is a really neat setup with the fuel system and the lighting and all that kind of stuff and the venting. But I'm gonna save that because there's another part of this generator hut that's really exciting to me. I love experimenting with new things and I have a different kind of heating system coming for it and I've never dealt with it before and I cannot wait to get it and try it and as soon as I get it and try it, I'll let you guys in on the secret. Quick note on my septic system. It's an approved septic tank that I have put in the ground here nice and deep. It's insulated to keep it from freezing. I even have the pipes heat traced. I installed these two access ports just in case there was a freeze up or it got blocked up for some reason. I could call in a pumper truck and, and just suck out these tanks and have it done with and kind of start over new. It has a full distribution field, completely certified out here. And I am happy to say it all works great. Man, this video is requiring a lot of thought. I'm actually pooped. That joke.
my surrounding sheds and buildings here that's a couple of sheds there i have things in these are my two temporary wood sheds they take about a full winter's wood the two of those plus a little bit i keep a little bit in that shed i keep a little bit in this shed over right here it's my outdoor kitchen i use it all the time i absolutely love it you guys love it too i have had questions regarding space and you know how, like how do you put all the things you had in your home into this cabin well i don't i kind of keep the minimal amount of stuff inside my cabin the rest of it goes in this building here and this is my old cabin which i just moved to the few feet from where my other cabin is and i just am working on it the last couple of weeks i got an outside door there for access for your snowmobiles or quad or anything you want to work on i have this place hooked up to solar as well i just come in here and i flick a switch right here on comes the inverter and on comes the lights and some of you guys have followed my other videos from years back i had this cabin and lived in it off and on for 20 years and now i've transformed it into a workshop garage type area my old stove is there those are my access doors i have this completely partitioned off now with an airtight door and exterior door with seal weather sealing on it and back here is where my bathroom and my two rooms used to be and now these are storage rooms that room is storage and this room is storage and again we're just kind of setting it up there so it works you know it gives us lots of room for different things and uh, you know your stuff that's your winter clothes in the summertime and uh, by partitioning this off that airtight door now i can keep the heat out here for when i'm working and there's no gas smells if i have a skidoo or something in here that penetrates that seal and guys there you have it that's the complete tour of my cabin and the surrounding buildings and it works which is just so exciting to build something with your own hands and then to use it for a year through all the canadian seasons and to see that it actually works is beyond rewarding i did not realize that you could experience such a thing in life like this and to put thousands of your comments uh, in one line right here yes i am living the dream i believe that it's a fantastic feeling i absolutely love every day i wake in the morning and i'm excited and i don't think i'll ever tire of it i've been here a long time and now to have this beautiful beautiful cabin here that works and built with my own hands just makes it all that much more rewarding and now you're wondering about that contest right all you have to do is leave me a comment leave me a question tell me what you thought of the cabin and somewhere in that comment leave the hashtag blue eddie i'll put it right on the screen there that's what you had to leave in the comment and i will draw in a couple of three weeks or so i got some busy times coming up so it, it'll take a little longer than normal and with that guys i'll sign off right here thanks for tuning in you are welcome to come see the off-grid cabin in use I look forward to getting back on here with you guys again. I look forward to the next video. And until the next video, take care of each other. Get outside and enjoy everything outdoors. And we'll see you next time. Guaranteed. Get outside.